last episode of 2020. Man, I'm pumped to see you guys. <laughs> Did I blow it, Tim? <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to talk about lessons learned from 2020. This might be a 10-hour episode because God knows 2020 was a one for the record books. And we got a lot, we learned a lot of lessons. So before we dive off into Divi Chat, let's say hey to everybody that's joined us today. Ladies first. Stephanie, you went last last week. So in honor of that, you're going to go second this week. Go, Sarah. <laughs> You're so mean, David. Uh, hey, guys, Sarah Oates from Endure Web Studios. You can catch me at endure.com.au and you can catch me on socials on Endure Web. And I just want to note that Steph's hair is looking amazing today. It's fly. <laughs> nice. I'm so glad you're here, Sarah. Hi, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> and you're I muted. Hear you. <laughs> Unmute yourself. Okay, try again. You still Third can't time. hear you. Muted. Hey, guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's still 2020. Everything's still good. Breaking. Thank you, Sarah, for the compliment on my hair. I got a little trimmy trim. I am Stephanie Hudson. You guys, I am from Focus WP, where we do all kind of cool stuff to help agencies and solopreneurs grow and scale their business. You can check us out at focuswp.co. And can you believe that 2020 is almost over? I mean, this year yeah. has been like the longest decade of our lives, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. What a year this month has been. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's been a long something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Steph, you done? Yeah. Just the, that was it. Corey. What's up, everybody? Corey Jenkins here. Uh, Divi Space, Aspen Grove Studios. Uh, I reside in Prescott, Arizona, but I'm actually out here uh, in Ashland, Oregon at David's house. So I'm like in the in his dining room while he's in his uh, his studio, his rap, his rap studio there. His rock. <laughs> yeah. Are you so, wearing a members only jacket, Corey? Uh, yeah, because I'm like the last member. No, dude, this is like a, a cool. Cool jacket, you know, like a cargo members only like jacket. A, that's like a cargo members only. It's kind of vintage. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like a new vintage. <laughs> this yeah. cool little vintage shop. <laughs> awesome. Uh, man, I love David Chat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim. Hey, everybody. Tim Streifler here, uh, broadcasting from San Clemente, California. Uh, it is still 2020, as Stephanie pointed out. Uh, so just in case anything goes wrong during this episode, <laughs> we blame it on 2020. Um, <laughs> that's just kind of the rule of thumb, but yeah. Like if your microphone falls off, if or... your microphone <laughs> falls <laughs> off, you see a giant asteroid right now. Are you, are your desk <laughs> unplugs <laughs> your <laughs> computer? Yeah. Stephanie's <laughs> making jokes, but those are both things that have happened to me during 2020 <laughs> on Diddy chat while we're live. So yeah. Um, you can find me online at divilife.com for all my Divi plugins, child themes, layouts, tutorials, wpgears.com, where I have the Divi business expert course, as well as the Divi beginner course with my pal, David Blackman. Um, and yeah, I'm going to end it there. I could name other URLs as well, but I'll, I'll stick to, to stick to the main two. Awesome. Well, as you could hear, I was starting the YouTube channel on... <laughs> A different monitor, so <laughs> I apologize for that. My name is David Blackman, co-founder of Aspen Grove Studios and Divi Space, and uh, co-founder of WP Gears as well, where we do some, do some teaching courses. And as you can tell, I've been working on a new something-something, going to end 2020 right. So I imagine there's been a lot of lessons that uh, not only us on the panel, but a lot of people in our audience that are watching right now probably have learned too. So I'm hoping that you guys throw out a bunch of uh, things that have lessons you've learned in 2020 as well. So we can share on the live stream. Um, don't really know where to start, but you know, there's a, there's a lot that's happened. So if any one of these co-hosts want to dive in while uh, dial in the rest of the stuff over here, then 
Great. Stephanie, you, you're, you're good at leading this stuff. So go. Oh, well, <laughs> well, no pressure. no, no pressure at all. Um, I was just thinking about 2020 and what, uh, like all the craziness and there's been so much like bad stuff that has happened. But I think anytime you go through stuff like that, it's like, you can see so much good come out of it too. And that's sort of what I was hoping. Like, I, I mean, the world's been on fire. We've had murder hornets, a pandemic, like all these things, <laughs> but like, but we've murder gotten hornets, a lot of good stuff too, right? Like I, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my business. I realized that I was basically already quarantining because I already had a home office and ordered everything online anyway. So <laughs> Like at the beginning, I was joking. Like, I think my life changed like 2% when growing it. Like I was, I'm good. But as the months and months roll on, you know, you do start to realize like, man, Zoom life is different than real life. And it's, it's hard. And we've, we've had to adapt in a lot of ways, but I think it's super cool to see how we've adapted. And I think something that um, is amazing that has been seen is that our businesses have, have survived. Like this industry that we're in has survived and even thrived in this during all yeah. of this kind of stuff. Like if we hit a pandemic where the electricity goes out, like we're all screwed. Like if we have to live off the <laughs> land, we're done. But when it's a pandemic like this, where we have to stay at home and help people sell their stuff online instead of in person, like we really are the lucky ones when it comes to all this stuff. Not some of us, Stephanie. Solar power is a real deal thing. <laughs> yeah, solar power, and I have a zombie uh, apocalypse escape vehicle now, in case you need that. <laughs> yeah, but like your business, like it's gonna be real tough to build websites. I don't know. Um, <laughs> without the internet, it's gonna sound like a <laughs> true a stupid. But during the fires, we were down the coast, and we had some solar power, but we didn't have any electricity. So I don't know if some solar power is somehow still connected. You somehow. have to have you have to have an inverter and you have to have enough inverter. It's not so much of the solar power, but yeah. the size of the inverter that you have in order to operate the electric gadgets yeah. that you have. So just that saying that maybe solar issue. power isn't the, you know. Well, no, but, if you're set up for it though. Yeah. And you do yeah, have yeah. enough. This, yeah. episode is say, actually, this episode's actually about doomsday prepping. Well, you, well, you also ways, need a way to store the solar power. Like, cause if you don't have a battery, maybe. then like at nighttime, you just yeah. don't have it's anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Call Elon. True, true. Call Elon. He'll yeah. help you. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say like my year started with some massive lessons. So like my year started with the fires, which involved me being down the coast and out of nowhere, everything just went like cell reception went electricity went and the fires were coming obviously but the lessons that I learned during that were my business is not set up for me to not have access to the internet like even though I was able to take a holiday I was still relying on the fact that I could check my email or I could still contact clients or clients could still contact me so although I wasn't planning on like being full on 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 it reminded me the fact that if something happens say you have a car crash and you end up in the hospital and it's not that you're dead, like, let's not go like full horrible, but say you're in a coma for like a month, what happens to your business and where do your clients contact and right. yeah. does anyone have access to your last pass? Like I suddenly was answering all these questions of like, oh my God, like I can't do anything about it. My clients have right. no access to me and nobody knows how to access any of my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I suddenly went, oh, I am not set up for this scenario. So speaking yeah, of that's going to be fire, it could be a car accident. It could be whatever. Stay right. tuned for late January, early February, 2021. We're going to have an episode on contingency plans. So yeah, that's nice. coming. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's, that's something that we've all learned, right? That's perfect. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it helps that like in that scenario, I mean, it does help have, you know, having a business partner, David and I both had our times, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, family members sick or different things where we've had to like step back. And it is nice knowing that, you know, you have a business partner, you have, you have some teammates who can help you, but yeah, it's just not, not only like people that are internet based, but I mean, if you're like a landscaper or, you know, like a gardener and you're doing weekly maintenance, <laughs> you know, your, your business is gonna, is gonna take a hit. And it's not like, not everybody can take over, you know, your business really. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I think having some of those safeguards in place and plans are important. You and David shouldn't be in the same place at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we don't fly together. We no we, longer we've fly we've together. Talked to, so. We've talked about that. Yeah, actually. So. That asteroid is coming right for that house. <laughs> don't worry. David will pull out his lightsabers. And... <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are only listening to this. I don't know why, but this, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I know if you if you're only listening, you really need to tune into the YouTube video just to see David's lightsabers hey. in the background. Sounds wrong, I gotta say. It does sound wrong, yeah. I made it plural. I thought maybe that would be better, but it wasn't. I don't know. You never know. And I also days. like I'm feeling compelled. This is gonna be bad too, but I have to ask why one is bigger than the other. Hey. I think, I think it's just. Hey. <laughs> I don't understand it. I think just because the um, camera's angled slightly. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, one it, shifted a little to the left. Hold on, hold on. Does this help? <laughs> Let me no. turn my head a little bit. Like All right, let's, like, yeah, let's keep this pertinent for the uh, for the audio listeners. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so what did you guys do? Did you who pivoted? Who had like a big pivot this year? Oh. Um, <sighs> Kind of. Well, I think we're pivoting and we pivoted somewhat. I've always kind of felt like, you know, video was going to be more, you know, obviously the whole world zooming now and a lot of businesses mm -hmm. are conducting their business online. So they want to have more of a professional kind of image and stuff that they're presenting and whatnot. So I think we've definitely pivoted for, for 2021. We're going to, you can see here, for example, even on Zoom, you know, just setting this stuff up for teaching, showing people how to do things. Or David is obsessed with know. his new camera equipment. He just wants to hey. show up. Hey, I know, he does. but but this but this is you know kind of this studio for, audio, and stuff. for mostly audio podcast. That's really help, useful. Yeah. No, we own product companies and people build websites kidding. and we teach them with tutorials and stuff. So, you know. Um, so it's going to be a totally different kind of thing that we're going to be doing. It's not only going to be me, Corey and Prescott and Josh and a lot of members in our team. And then Tim and I are going to be doing some things that involve a lot of, I think we wanted to do that anyways with the video stuff. We knew the importance of it, but I think 2020 COVID shutting everything down just kind of shoved everybody online so um yeah i mean that's yeah, a we, yeah, we, that, yeah we actually had it you know i mean interestingly you know we talk about our our business surviving and and in something like like covid i mean you know fortunately our, our business didn't um wasn't like impacted um and you know because you know people are being furloughed or laid off or they're realizing like i've got to learn a new trade so really like yeah the courses have really picked up and people are going back to their hobbies of web development and and purchasing courses and stuff like that. I think a lot of people like this year with the extra time on their hands of that, just, you know, staying at home have like picked up new trades or, or hobbies and things, which, which I think is awesome. Um, you know, something that people have wanted to do for a long time and they're circling back around, whether it's like, you know, reading a book a week or learning some new skill. I, I think that's one of the major things that's happened this year is how busy we are doing nothing sometimes, <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and, and actually the way David just phrased that, uh, talking about the video stuff, stuff that he would have done anyways, but because of, of the pandemic and, and stuff, it's kind of, you know, helped transition. And, and I think that's the moral of the story for a lot of people is it's like, oh, well, we were going to do this anyways, but now we have all this time or now, you know, we're, we're forced to, you know, shut our door. So we have, you know, we have to force to pivot or, or whatnot. And that seems to kind of be the like uh, a very prominent theme with 2020 is it was like, okay, well, I knew I was going to eventually get a website. So now I might as well do it now. And so yeah. what I've seen is um, being a product business selling products to web designers and website creators is like in the, the beginning of COVID, we saw an uptick in sales. And I talked to, to Nick Roach and he actually ex experienced the same thing with, with elegant themes overall, because it was like, Hey, I need to get my business online. Let me go and buy website creation tools, whether that's the more you know, DIYers. Exactly. So, um, 
and, and so I, and I, and talking to, to different web designers and stuff, some, it was a big hit and, you know, their business went down, but some, it went up because it was all these businesses that needed to pivot and needed help doing that. Uh, you know, or, or, you know what, let's finally do that, that website redesign that we've been putting off for two years and stuff like yeah. that. And so it was some, you know, were, were affected negatively and some were affected positively. Yeah. Yeah. Like restaurants. I mean, so many restaurants were holding off of having a real online presence. And if they did, it was more of a brochure site. Right. But, I yeah. mean, nowadays you realize like how easy it is with like WordPress, Divi, WooCommerce, some of the other tools. I mean, if you hire somebody experienced and they need to get it done, I mean, you could almost have a working website and e-commerce shop up within like a day to sell your, to sell your stuff online, which is like, which is pretty amazing. You know, I mean, you, you think of that like from like 10 years ago and it was, yeah. it was somewhat unfathomable, but it's, it's pretty cool how quickly businesses pivoted to, to save their, their brick and mortar locations, um, which, yeah. you know, turning to the future is going to be, kind of a common theme because in, in general it's yeah. out. I, I hope they don't go away. Obviously dine in restaurants are, you know, something yeah. we hope to return to one day. But I think that that absolutely small to medium sized businesses and even some large ones, but more iconic businesses in in, in in a town, for instance. I know when I started building websites for clients and I would go and I would meet, I thought, oh man, these these guys got a crappy website, but they're, oh, they're one of my favorite places. They never thought they needed a website, you know, because they were so well known and they had such a loyal base until the COVID hit, you know, the and then they realized when their restaurants were closed because the government was like, that's it. No people are coming in. They weren't set up to sell online. Um, you know, so I, I think I think some businesses have definitely thrived, like like several of us have said here, and um, and and they're poised to thrive. I think people that get into this type of you know, if you're in web design and even live streaming and stuff has just kind of exploded. You know, if you can teach that to people and and help set that up for them and stuff would be phenomenal. That's not the direction I'm going in. I don't want to teach people how to live stream and stuff, but, um, but there's a whole industry, you know, I'm in a Facebook group for Ecamm is, is the software that I use for, for doing the live streaming and stuff, Ecamm live. And that community to me is very reminiscent of Divi. Yeah. When, when our first Facebook group started because they're so passionate about this awesome new tool that they found and they're all helping each other you know, learn how to use this tool, you know, I mean, I would have never been able to set this up as quickly if it weren't for that Facebook group and those people sharing their knowledge freely, you know, to everybody. And I'm watching several businesses form and explode in there because of this stuff. So it was, it was, it really kind of took me back to the beginnings of Divi and the Facebook and Divi chat and um, how things were in the beginning and stuff, because just watching it grow has been really awesome. You know, should we start really Ecamm cool. chat, David? <laughs> Ecamm e marketplace. Ecamm chat. Ecamly. This is my Ecamly right here. <laughs> I think it's so. super awesome that you guys have really leaned full into the courses and things like that. I think that's something that um, the three of you fellas have done. We're already doing, but then like way more this year. And it, I mean, what, what a cool thing that like you have the opportunity to sort of facilitate that growth for people and people yeah. who are really hit hard by the industry that are then able to come to you and level. <laughs> God, Is that your jingle bells? I was waiting yeah. for you to sing. Jeez. sing I got to go us. put a quarter in her little bucket, I think. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and what was, what was really cool is, is we did like a scholarship program too, for our courses. And like, you know, we just, we kind of wanted to get in touch with what people were, were dealing with, but we wanted to help as well. So we had like a scholarship program and people would write us and we didn't want their full story, but you know, like what kind of, you know, troubles are you experiencing? And we, you know, we gave away probably close to like 50 free courses uh, to people, but it was, nice. it, it really put things That's in awesome. perspective, like hearing what just people were dealing with. And um, you know, we're all stuck in our little microcosmal uh, tech world and stuff. And there's people out there, you know, dealing with, with getting laid off and their business is sh shutting down. And, um, 
it, it just really makes you want to want to help help more. So uh, I tell you what, when it was early on, like early days, and I was slammed busy, like so many people were coming at me, like needing help with stuff on their sites. And every one of my friends is like, talking about how bored they were and yeah. <laughs> it, and then talking about posting about all the extra money they're getting for like they're making more money on unemployment and they're bored and they're like all tick tocking all day long and I'm like if one more person tells me they're bored I'm gonna kill them like I was so frustrated but in the end yeah. we really are fortunate that we yeah. got to got to yeah. get working like we're, we're busier than ever before but uh <laughs> yeah it, it was also funny hearing like people who aren't used to working from home and they're like troubles yeah. and some people yeah. just hated it and they could not adapt whatsoever, yeah. which is, I feel like what we would be like if we ever had to go get like regular jobs now. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, it'd, be, it'd be such a difficult uh, transition, but uh, yeah. yeah Wait, you, you know, mean to tell me I have to come in at 8 AM and then stay till <laughs> 5 PM and I only yeah. get to leave for lunch. Like what? Well, what if I worked <laughs> until and after 4 pants? Yeah. Pants, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. So yeah. uh, Mike Devitt is in the chat. He says they pivoted by offering payment plans for people that were having trouble. I did a little bit more of that. I started up my website leasing program, which has been nice for people who couldn't, um, you know, people that can afford a website, but they just couldn't swing it with cash flow all up front. <clears throat> that was a nice thing. And I, I forgot to say this, but uh, Tim, Mike asked earlier when we started if you could please define 2020 for us. <laughs> yeah, I, yes. I think I think we need like ten hours at least. For this. <laughs> so 2020, def as defined in the dictionary, is uh, known as a practical joke, <laughs> yeah. and it basically is the year that everything bad happened all at once. And uh, a 365 day period has felt like a 365 year period. It has. So that and, is the and official it's the devil's definition. partner. No, no, not, devil's that Tim's partner. Saying, not that Tim's saying COVID is a joke, right? Mm. Oh my God. And yeah. no, we defined definitely a whole not. bunch of new words this year. Some included Blur's Day. Uh, <laughs> I don't know Blur's Day. I don't know Blur's Day either. Tim, it's where tell you're me not more. really sure what day it is. It goes Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Blur's Day. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, have a lot of, seen I don't know what day it is this year. Oh, man, a lot. Yeah. Have you all seen the Match.com commercial with the devil and 2020? No. Nope. Yes, you have to watch have. it. It's funny. Where yeah. 2020 is the oh. partner of the devil. <laughs> and it's like... Two zero two zero. Just call me twenty twenty. You know, this, and it's it's hysterical. I yeah, mean, this episode is brought to you by Match dot com. Excellent. <laughs> Just what like, I mean. talking about positive things that have come out of twenty twenty. Lots of great memes. So that's, that's true. The meme, a, the, a meme <laughs> game the meme is, game was strong <laughs> this year. It it was. Was. Oh my Very goodness! Strong. There, there's a joke I've heard a few times, a few different places. But like in future years, history. Uh, scholars will be writing their thesis on like <laughs> 2020 and they'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to write my thesis on May of 2020. And then the professor will be like, no, 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 that's too broad. You need to narrow it down <laughs> to a week or a day. Yeah. Masks and gel. Lots masks. of masks. You know. I just actually found a it got like popped up in my memory from a mask post I had put on Facebook where I was like, listen, it's not all bad. I mean, like if you have bad breath or if other people have bad breath, if you that's have food funny. in your teeth, oh, that's you funny. get to save 50% on makeup. You stick like your tongue out at people when you're mad at them and they won't know. They don't notice nearly as much yeah. when you're talking to yourself in the grocery store. In all honesty, though, like I know the pandemic has been awful, like awful, and we would never want to do it again. But there have been a few things that I hope continue that have been really positive out of all of this. One of them is that our clients have learned how to use Zoom and they've right. been forced into it. And so all of a sudden saying to someone, hey, could we meet over Zoom isn't the end of the world compared to before yeah. when they didn't even know how to use Zoom. So you literally so need a half hour before the meeting to get them on. Yeah. So we've yeah. we've potentially saved ourselves like off I'm going to go for a meeting. It's half a day. By the time I prep for the meeting, go to the meeting, tra like travel time in the meeting, come back, I'm exhausted from the meeting. Compared to all of that, like potentially it, it's like an hour and a half or two hours max out of your day. So I think that's been a really positive thing that potentially we're going to be able to utilize moving forward. 
Um, I think there's like even some health benefits in terms of like going into winters in the future. If you have a cold and you choose to wear a mask, you're not going to look like an idiot. You're just going to look like a little bit like it has been in some Asian countries where it just became a normal thing that if you have a cold, that's a way that you can kind of look after people around you. I think there's a potential that, you know, we are going to know how to be more hygienic and actually look after things so that maybe we're not going to get as many colds and flus during winter. So I know it's been awful, like awful, 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 but there might be a few things that may last the test of time beyond it that I hope can be positive yeah, I, things I, I, for I hope us. people keep washing their hands, please. Yeah, <laughs> well, absolutely. And, uh, blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. Yeah, I've always I think thought that, that was gone. disgusting. Yeah. I'd never thought of it until someone pointed it out this year and I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's kind of gross. <laughs> Like I remember being at like kids' birthday parties and watching like the birthday kid like blow up the candles and stuff. And it's like, like I'm, just, I'm saying this as an adult like, and I'm like, wow, that little kid is spitting all over the cake. Like, do I want some? Oh. Those like those inflators for like air mattresses and like, or a, you know, a blower, like a leaf blower. Yeah. Get a oh, leaf blower on your cake and splatter it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please record Sounds that fun to me. when you try it. Yeah. Your kids would love I, it. I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. It, it probably will happen at my house anyways without trying. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. What was something? Yeah, I agree. Just... Sarah, do you have a new office or is that a green screen? No, no, no. This is my kitchen. Um, it's zoomed in. I don't know how to unzoom it. That's my kitchen. Oh, um, so I, after the pandemic, actually, well, sorry, not after the pandemic. We're not after yet. After sure. our lockdown here, um, my husband and I decided it would be better if we had some audio barrier between us just because he chat, he works online and he works with people who live in completely different states. So it would be a bit like this. So they just chat all day, which is fine. But anytime I needed to record a video, I'd have to go in the other room and, you know, it just became a thing. So I decided to move so out here. you out. <laughs> yeah, and now because of all of that, we've decided we really need a bigger house. So we're house hunting. Yay. Nice. <laughs> There's right. a, See? a house 2020. across the street from me that's on sale, Sarah, if you want. Excellent. I'll come. I'll come have a look. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm not coming I, to America. I'm sorry, but no. I, <laughs> Australia I, 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 is Especially in California place. right now is like not the most attractive place to live for a lot of oh. reasons. Yeah, like you guys are on full lockdown and... again, aren't you? Yeah. You know, LA fires, is. We're like, we're literally on fire like every other week. Yeah. Gnarly wildfires. Yes. <laughs> totally gnarly, yeah. dude. I was I was interested, like, um, I, I, I did like a post kind of like, I don't know, it was like April or May. Um, you know, just curious of like what my friends like makeshift home offices looked like because I know a lot of them were working from home and they were like ironing boards in a closet as a dad <laughs> and things like that. Uh, but I, I do hope that something that does stick from this year, and, I, and I've read some articles, I mean, Silicon Valley learned from it and a lot of other companies, that remote work is possible. You don't have to like show up mm-hmm. in an office and have your butt in the seat for 10 hours a day to yeah. be productive. Um, and actually, they've kind of found out the, the opposite. But I mean, I, I hope, you know, for like uh, mother, you know, mothers who just had, had a kid and they, they still yeah. need to work that, you know, that, that yeah. companies are more flexible and understanding in situations that, that, uh, you know, th- there are things that occur to where you, you, it's impossible to leave home. And it puts a yeah. lot of like people in really big binds, uh, work-wise, you know, I mean, to where, you know, they're losing their jobs, losing their houses because companies aren't as flexible. Yeah. So hopefully that's something that we see out of this is like a change in mindset from, from uh, corporate, you know, I, I almost said corporate America, but but the world really, yeah. Yeah. I think point. it has really fast forwarded a lot of stuff, like things yeah. that would eventually have maybe come, like somebody was saying something about like getting online, like selling online. You guys know I work with breweries and stuff and boy, have they been hit hard. Like it's hey, brutal Corey. for that industry. Hey. <laughs> 2020, Corey and I were- I like those glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, it's like upside, upside down, down beer, beer inside there. Yeah. You were like, what, David? You were like, Shh. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, like, so these, the breweries, it's been really interesting to see too, how even the, like the legal stuff, they've been kind of like where it was, it wasn't legal for them to sell online in certain places or to ship or to do different things. And they were basically like, just go ahead and do it just so you can like stay making money and stay afloat. And it was like, it sort of cut through tons of red tape and you know, even and like, oh, wait, there's no reason to not have this anyways, because they right. realize and it's, it's like, scary hey, that's thought. super profitable. The government still gets taxes from it. The, like the, everybody the co- wins to go and things. Yeah. 
Yeah. Everybody wins. So it's like, even if, if ever we have a, you know, normal again, whatever that even means anymore, it's like, those things aren't going to go away, which is super cool for those businesses. And it's extra super cool for our businesses because we are the ones that help facilitate all that stuff. You know, like we've, I've got a little deal for like breweries, like we'll get you online in a week and a half. If you're using this, this, or this point in the sale system, you know, like those kind of things. It's like, if you can streamline those things and help facilitate them for people, it's like, and, and like I was saying with the educational stuff you guys are doing, like to be able to like, not only have our businesses stay successful or even grow, but at the same time, help people like, isn't that like the dream? You know, I mean, isn't yeah, that it's awesome? Pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you just gave me a great idea, Stephanie. Actually, what it's one it? I was thinking about last week. Oh, so I didn't give it to you. Yeah, you didn't, but you reminded okay. me. And now I just I just made a note to myself so that I wouldn't forget again. Or write write it, write it, write it down, David. Write it down. Can we hear it again? <laughs> Should I tell you? Should I <laughs> if tell I know you? David, I, I know he needs to write it down. Let me see. I know, right? I suffer from CRS so bad. Can't remember shit. Uh, forget it. Quick, quick, quick. Um, I'm going to be transparent, honest here, Stephanie. I'm not sure I want to divulge this to the world yet. What? Uh, I've never heard you. Like, he wants I've, to be I've transparent never... and honest that he does not want to be transparent. Right now, <laughs> with the idea. Uh, well, I don't want to. It's... <laughs> I think that they're because of COVID and the pandemic and businesses, the way that they're going. um, I just see an opportunity. Ah, what the hell? I'm going to tell him. I hadn't even told Corey (laughs) this yet. David whispered in my ear. Okay. Okay. Are you, can you hear me, Stephanie? (laughs) Uh, I'm thinking about some type of POS for WooCommerce, you know, since, since people, there's so many different POSs, but if you could, you could have a POS built in WooCommerce, the number one e-commerce platform in the world. You yeah. know, there's, work, there's, work, like, I mean, there's like compatible POS. Right. Where they, but where they sync. Yeah, 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 but not one that because so many businesses use so many different POSs in their existing business. If you can build something that gets a store online super fast with WooCommerce and the POS, and if it can, I haven't worked out all the logistics, but I've, it's just yeah, an idea the, that I thought about this. Week, one you know? of the I, biggest I, I, issues with I, I, that I is that there are so many I know. POS systems. You guys know what I, POS stands for, right? Yeah. Piece of. Piece of. Mm-hmm. Piece of shit. Isn't like the find, exact yeah. same joke? <laughs> this POS is a POS. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just something that I was I was thinking about. And because we are we have quite a few WooCommerce stuff, which lessons learned, you know, and, and some of the things that we've done, we've, we've dove off more into our e-commerce stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, in doing that, I just, it's just kind of something that I was thinking of. So, you know, there you go. Told you. What have you guys learned about your, your like relationships? Like personal stuff. I miss my friends. (laughs) I know. Well, you're such an extrovert. And I'm an extrovert too, yeah. but I think I've done better at it than you, David. I feel like you've gone a lot more bonkers crazy. <laughs> I mean, you're you're way more bonkers crazy the than hell? me. I mean, like, what the hell? No, I don't, <laughs> like you're going more crazy being like stir crazy is what I mean. You know what's on it, honest? I'll tell you, I don't feel that way. Um, oh. <laughs> I think the last the last year has been a lot of personal growth for me. Uh-huh. And one thing I'll share with you a lesson. I don't mean to cut you off. Let me, I'll tell you. No, go ahead. Stephanie. No, go ahead. I don't care. I'll, I'll tell you on. one lesson learned for me and a big thing for me this year is what I realized is I've invested in my business, <laughs> all of this stuff. Hey, you know, all this equipment, but I didn't invest a lot in, in mental, emotional, you know, my personal well-being. So what I've started doing was I've started investing in those types of things. So, so I haven't been stir crazy. I bought some quartz crystal singing bowls that I, I started meditating. Um, So I've, I've tapped, I've kind of tried and what I realized and and invested in those, because those things aren't freaking cheap. I'm going to tell you. However, but I realized that I, it wouldn't, be nothing for me to 
drop money on this thing really fast. Your phone. But to actually, you know, invest in something that's going to help your mental. Well, and your don't forget, you've got to keep well-being. that freezer full of chicken pot pies. <laughs> that's right, baby. Chicken pot <laughs> pie. <laughs> so I just realized that that's a big lesson I learned this year. I don't, we as, as, you know, I don't know many people that talk about, hey, I invested in my emotional well-being or my mental health, you know. It is, is true, though, when you're when it's just you at home, you know, yeah. or or when you're used to being ha- having alone time and now your family's there all the time. Like this is sort of what I'm talking about. Like so many people's home life has changed fundamentally in one of those two ways. It's either like less alone time or way more alone time. And it's like, what is that revealed about yourself? Like yeah. I've been surprised at how I've just sort of like shriveled up kind of like my social yeah. interactions. Like I'm, I'm a, a, the stereotypical extrovert, which is like you recharge with people, yeah. but I can't. So, and then it's like zoom just isn't the same after being on meetings all day long on zoom and church on zoom and everything, you know, like everything on zoom. It's like, I, I don't want to hang out on Friday night on zoom anymore. Like I'm burnt. Yeah. I'm done sitting in this chair. Like I want to yeah. be somewhere else in my house. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's like, so that's hard, but then like you go, I'll go and do like a, driveway drop off or something like that. And I'll stand in the driveway and talk to somebody for like, you know what I mean? Like you go and drop some food off for somebody yeah, or take okay. a gift to somebody, something like I that. I like that. I hadn't heard that. I like it. I like it. Oh, it's so nice. To do, but I'll end up standing in that. One time I had, my mom had ordered these fancy cupcakes and they were too sweet. We couldn't eat them, but they're beautiful. So I'm like, I'm taking them to people. So I just took like four cupcakes and just went and took one to each different person, but I would stand in the driveway and talk to them for like 20 minutes. Cause, and then I would leave in the so much better of a mood. And I realized yeah. like, I don't, I don't feel every day like, Oh, I wish I could go be with people. But like, I realized like, I really do need to take those moments to right. like go and experience a little social yeah. interaction, even if it's from I, 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 I 10 feet out. away on a driveway. Like the opposite for me. I mean, I'm not like a, <laughs> like a complete introvert, but I'm not like Stephanie and David where I right. thrive off like talking to people. Like, and your wife. You know, yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, and I'm busy with my family and stuff. But this year I've kind of found out more about how maybe I do need like, you know, my people. And, you know, one thing I'm, I'm really missing this year, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for you guys and, um, you know, and the relationships that we have and we could talk and, you know, make jokes and stuff, but I'm, you know, I'm really missing like our word camp, like planning yeah, committee yeah. people and like, yeah. that whole process, like, and then the, the word camp coming to fruition because, you know, word camps are canceled all through t- probably 2021. Just really missing that whole like process. Cause that's something I really enjoy, but I didn't really, I, I guess I kind of took it for granted a little bit until this year realizing it's not going to be there. So maybe I'm not like a complete hermit, like I, like I thought. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I still, I'm totally happy being at home with my family. And it's like, you know, if, if, if we're, you know, quarantined and we just have to stay home, then we, we have a good time. It's nonstop excitement around my house with the kids and stuff. So. I bet. Yeah. I think yeah, I, found, and, yeah. <laughs> I found that I'm uh, like, I definitely need my space. And I think I hadn't realized so I've talked about it a few times, like a number of a number of years ago, I got chronic fatigue. And so I used to do a lot of running. That was how I had my mental head space where I would just go out and go running and I had to give that up. Um, but then I started working from home almost around about the same time. And so I think I used to be in the house by myself all the time. And even though I didn't have my running, I was just in the house. And if it was all a bit too much, I just would have silence during the day. And that was really nice for me. And what I noticed... Um, was I adapted to having my husband working from home for the last year, but then COVID came and I suddenly had the kids at home all the time and I couldn't do exercise and there was just never any silence in the house. Um, And I really struggled with that adjustment. And I think I had to kind of work out ways to um, work around that. And so like David, I've invested in my mental health a little bit. I've been doing more meditation. I've been doing um, slow walks in the afternoon and just kind of getting out of the house, like no matter how tired I'm feeling or unwell I'm feeling, just doing a 15 minute slow walk, just getting out into nature has been really helpful. And even when we're in lockdown, I was still able to do that um, because we were allowed within a certain 
range of our house um, and I could go by myself or my husband could come with me or my kids could come with me. And that was a really important part of this year. Um, and I think through that, I another thing through this year that I learned was you don't have to say yes to everything. Um, I think COVID has been really helpful for people like me who are chronic over yeses. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> I tend to feel the pressure to say yes to people when they ask me to do something. I take on more than I should take on, than my body can handle. And this year has been really helpful being able to say no more often and being forced to stay at home a bit more has actually been really good for my health. Um, and as we kind of come out of lockdown, I've just been trying to kind of continue that on and not necessarily say yes to everything not kind of put the kids back into 500 different activities. And that's been really helpful for my balance in life a little bit. Um, so I think I've definitely learned those things about myself. Um, and I've been spending a bit of time looking at my personality and the way my personality interacts yeah. with other people. And also uh, the, the way that it makes me feel like I need to keep everybody happy and therefore take on more than I should and be constantly letting people down. Um, and as a part of all of that, what I've learned is I am a chronic bad scheduler um, or scheduler, whichever way you want to say it. Um, but I have learned the lessons the hard way this year that um, sometimes I take on too much stuff. I think I was very nervous at the start of COVID and I took on more than I could achieve and I was letting people down. And so through this year, I've been slowly learning to build more time buffer into projects so that I'm not letting people down. And also if I can see things are heading in the wrong direction, trying to speak up early and trying to say early to the client, look, I'm not going to achieve that in the next two weeks. We're going to need to add a couple more weeks to that. Um, and that's been a really hard lesson because it's against my personality. I hate conflict, um, but getting on top of it earlier has actually prevented conflict. And I'm trying to remind myself, if you say it earlier, it causes much less grief than if you wait till the end and then the day before say, I'm not done yet. I need another two weeks. Um, right. So those are all really hard lessons that I've been learning this year and they've been really helpful both from a personal perspective. I've also let go of some friendships. That's been really helpful for my mental health. You know, like yeah. I've, I've done a lot of internal work this year and it's helped me see some perspective of what matters, what doesn't matter, what am I doing just because I feel like I should versus or who am I investing time in that maybe I would prefer to invest time in these other people and mm. then finding balance in my work. So I feel like I've had a very big growth year this year and yeah. I'm hoping. It sounds like I, it. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> like that's a lot yeah. of changes. It is. It is. Yeah. Th and it was COVID that's that, kind of what you know, I, some of it yeah, I was heading. That's what I was saying. Anyway. But COVID really, like, yeah. I think COVID was helpful in the process of forcing some of that to happen as well. Yeah, I, I agree. I think for me, what I realized as much as an extrovert as I am, and as much as I love and enjoy people, what I've discovered is I've never been alone in my life, you know, yeah. and I actually enjoy the quiet and alone time now. And, and it's, so it's been a huge internal growth, kind of like, like Sarah for me this year. So I actually have not, I've, I feel like I've kind of personally thrived inside mm -hmm. being by myself and stuff because it's, it's made me look at myself more, but not in a, you know, in a bad way, just kind of, kind of look at you know, some of the relationships you, and stuff. When too. you go out yeah. and you're like, it's easy, David, for you and I to like have, surface conversations yeah it's easy for us to just just bs with people and to yeah. crack jokes and to just yeah. have a good time and that that's nothing deep like it's just it's yeah. easier to do that than to focus right. on the serious stuff and the the deep stuff and yeah. really touch our on our motivations and our inner like desires and things like that so it it's that is kind of a a good thing and like sarah was saying with this that she made those changes too i think it's like this has been enough of a disruptor that it's kicked us all out of our comfort zones and sort of forced us to take a look at like, okay. And, and also like, what is important? You know, what really is important to us? And, you know, you all realize like your family and like, if you hear the news that somebody, you know, got COVID or had, you know, lost their job or whatever happened, like when it's someone close to you, you start to realize the value of those people and, 
the value of like your like how the you're we're sort of down back to basics right like we 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 now know beyond a shadow of a doubt how important leggings are and stretchy pants <laughs> like that has been i mean yeah. you know like that's key i i, I totally learned that one yeah <laughs> Stretchy hey, pants. I'm laughing. For the I'm, I'm laughing because I relate. Shave my legs. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. Why, David? I relate. You know, comfort oh, yeah. is important. You know, man. David's actually oh. wearing yoga pants right now. Yeah, yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> Tim, you got anything you want to say? I know we've been feel like we've been talking a lot. T- Tim, you learn this year, baby. man. Come on. He had a baby. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, th- well, this year has been a blur f- for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Having a baby, uh, being, I mean, kind of quarantined as, as others have mentioned, uh, I've been working from home for, and you moved this year too. five years. No, I moved last year. Oh, okay. But yeah. Uh, so I moved last year from Texas back to California. Um, but yeah, having a baby is definitely a blur. And then, uh, even though I've been working from home for a long time, having my wife here, cause before she went on maternity leave, she was working from home. And so that that's been an adjustment period, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's what a decade this year has been like so much has happened. Like when, ta- when Corey mentioned April or March, I'm like, man, that feels like it was 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, it feels like so long ago. Um, but but yeah, it's definitely been a, a growing year. And I could definitely relate to what Stephanie was saying regarding uh, like being, uh, shoot, what's the word? Zoom fatigue, where it's like, we do this for work. And then now all of a sudden we're expected to do this for personal time uh, yeah. with friends and like, you know, FaceTiming with family. And it's like, no, it's like, if you want to come see me, we can stand six feet apart and talk, but like, I can't do one more video chat, uh, this decade. So did you guys hear that, um, inquiries about like facial injectables is up. I like, I don't know if this is just Australia or America too, but it's the zoom effect where people are looking at their faces all day and suddenly going, "Ah, I don't know if I like my face. (laughs) Really? Do I need any Botox, Sarah? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, totally it's, 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 it's probably been an american thing for a long time that <laughs> yeah but i don't think we've all been looking at our Botox faces as much as we have and that's a little bit confronting in some ways you know just sitting right. and staring at your face all day yeah yeah wait you mean you guys don't have a feed of your face on while you work quietly <laughs> <laughs> you, Only on tuesdays I, I rewatch my whole work day at night so. <laughs> you rewatch your work day <laughs> <laughs> David has all reality. three camera angles just on yeah. all the time. <laughs> Bad. Bad. Let's go. <laughs> he just switches them for himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a mess. I love it. <laughs> I'm having fun. Uh, you know what? I'm living my best life. I'm just going to put are. that out there. I'm living my best Lightsabers life. and all. You guys in the chat have been kind of quiet. I'm what have you good at it. Hold on. I know. You're getting better. <laughs> right on the money. <laughs> <laughs> guys right are getting what What have you guys learned this year what are you going to take forward with you have you had personal growth have you had business growth have you had a big pivot things like that we'd love to hear about it if you want to put it in the chat or put it in comments um yeah and i think oh i wanted to say like this is our last episode of 2020 by the way that's why we're doing the review sort of early yeah. in december yeah because this is our last. So we, we will not see you for a few weeks. I think we're three weeks between the December holidays and the new year's and all that. So, yeah. What, what's going to be uh, interesting is when 2021 hits and then all of this stuff that went wrong in 2020, isn't just magically gone. People are going to be like, wait, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new year. <laughs> Why hasn't yeah. COVID just completely disappeared? A little bit like Y2K, except like the reverse where everyone's like holding on oh, for wow. the 1st of January. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's still exactly the same <laughs> as yesterday. <laughs> what? Now <laughs> I, I'm assuming exactly. this mag- Magi web design. I love this. So we asked them to post some things in the chat. Magi Web Design says that all I can say is virtual reality has been a revelation for me. This <laughs> super cool. Playing playing mini golf with my dad during lockdown 
I want to play. Has been a blast, and I've lost 20 pounds. That's awesome. Amazing. That's pretty what? awesome. I need to From get on From playing that. virtual, maybe? Oh, you yeah, gotta what, play, what system you gotta is play that? Beat Saber. It's virtual. Beat Saber is so it's, the most you're amazing. You're swinging, I imagine. It's all virtual, so it's physical activity. Yeah, what, what device and system is that? I've, I've never yeah. done VR besides, I think, with Corey and David when we did that. Um, Mag Magi was that WordCamp Phoenix? The after party, there was like a VR Yeah, trailer. there was. Yeah, it was. We have ours through a PlayStation. So it just comes with like a little camera that goes on top of the TV. But there's ones that are dedicated that are way better. But the PlayStation one does a pretty good job in general. But there's definitely fancier ones that you could go for. Yeah, my yeah. kid's asking for like a VR headset, and I'm like, no, yeah. he's already stuck to his Switch and stuff. So, <laughs> Walt, yeah, that's well, cool. yeah. golf on Oculus Quest. Yeah, Oculus, Oculus, Oculus is good. Definitely, um, I might have to do that. That's the one yeah, that Josh, Josh, go with my mask on, <laughs> Knock, knocking over all the cameras and stuff. Yeah, get one that's wireless. That's my recommendation. Yeah, the wire is kind idea. of a pain. Um, yeah. also, okay. So John Williams, um, also says he's curious if there's one piece of advice that we could offer on what you would do differently during quarantine, what would it be? Differently. I'll tell you one. I like what I would have done differently this year is I need to take more walks and do more yoga. Cause I have been terrible at that. It's so easy to just get stuck yeah. at your desk and not go anywhere. I don't have kids and stuff, so I don't have that distraction like pulling me away i don't have a dog i have to walk i don't any you, of that so, you want some uh, no thank you <laughs> we'll send no, you thank you yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm good thanks and uh yeah, i don't have to take my cat for a walk or anything like that so yeah. it's been too easy to just get stuck at the desk and just plow through work so that's one thing that i'm trying to improve is uh having time to like get fresh air go outside move my body a little bit because i'm starting to like I'll feel like stiff in the mornings a little bit. I'm like, I've never, ever felt like that. And it's like, I don't even want to hear you say it's because of my age. Cause like, I'm not ready to accept <laughs> that. It's just cause I haven't been doing my stretches. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my advice for that, get an Apple watch and mm -hmm. set your goals and hit your goals every day. I have a 580 day streak. Wow. streak. Oh, nailing I it i haven't missed any days of hitting all my goals yeah. that's and amazing i it, haven't so now it's like well i can't miss it now days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah D Take david's that. beating me by one day <laughs> yeah I, I would have to make like real easy goals though because you can well, like well, you can start with it really low and it just slowly yeah. it like as you yeah. meet your goals it says hey you've been meeting your goals would you like to increase them and you just slowly increase yeah them. My, uh, i haven't increased mine in like a very long time because my goal is the consistency of it so like if i go out and i do a three mile like hike i will hit my goals easily like i will like surge past them Crush em. but like but days where like i i don't i can't maybe do a three mile hike i can still hit my goals to where to me it's like if i push them too high well then it's like i'm not going to do them it's like i want that consistency and, and that habit forming and so i have them low enough to where it's not unattainable if i you know can't you know spend an hour outside i told you guys before about my mom with her apple watch it is so funny because she does not know how to work it at all every time she goes <laughs> to silence it she hits this where is it it's two bells and she can never remember which one is so every time she goes to silence yeah. it it goes ding 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 <laughs> oh so it pings her phone she hits the wrong one every time. Yeah, when she tries to find it, she silences it. So then she can't hear it. It's the whole thing is hilarious. But then her circles, she doesn't understand them, but she'll be like, it'll be like 11 at night. She'll be like, hey, just a brisk 40 minute walk. I could still do it. Like, <laughs> like do what? Brisk She's like, I don't know. Walk. I don't know. <laughs> That's amazing. It is. It's a really hilarious. And thankfully she doesn't listen to this show because she'd be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the things that I would do differently is just do all the things that I started doing later in the year at the start. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of at an okay point at the moment where I'm really working on a lot of stuff and I am really happy about that. But as I look back at like my step count in say March and April, like it was pretty bad. <laughs> um, so like, I, I just wish I had started the journey sooner of kind of the journey that I'm on at the moment. Um, you know what, what I would do differently. 
I have some thoughts on that too, Sarah. I think like another thing that we've kind of learned at least has sort of seemed like I see people talking about a little more. It's like, it's okay yeah, to just be gentle with yourself for a little yeah. bit. Like it's okay to go through a thing and not have to be at full capacity. Like all of this stuff that we went through, and I think we've talked about this in previous episodes too. Like it has been like existential stress that yeah. is in addition to like, just the day-to-day work stuff, paying bills, et cetera. It's like, this is heavy stuff that we've all been going through. So to be like a little bit easy on yourself and not expecting to keep upping your goals and all that kind of, you know, getting bigger rings, whatever it is. I don't know. It's like, that's, that's kind of okay too. And it's like, as long as you don't let yourself get stuck there for too long, it's like, it's still kind of okay. Which I think is, uh, at least here, it's not a very American thing. You know, like that's not like we got to go, go, go where we brag about how little sleep we get and how many days and hours we work and blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's like to sort of be able to say like, yeah, I'm going to have another glass of wine and I'm going to watch Netflix and I'm going to just like hang out for a little bit and just chill. Yeah, I didn't say it. It (laughs) came into my head. At the the bottom of the lockdown, I would have bought, if I could do it all over again, Amazon stock. Tesla oh. stock, <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin, Bit- like when the market Bitcoin, yeah. Bitcoin, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like dang it, I remember yeah. thinking like hand yeah, sanitizer whatever. stock, toilet paper stock, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would have bought well, toilet paper sooner. Oh man, no kidding. Seriously, <laughs> toilet paper stock. And we already had a backlog <laughs> of toilet paper because we have it on auto ship with Amazon, and it like sends way too much, and so it's like. Like You're before lockdown, we had this like huge supply. We're like, no, 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 we didn't. We didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> you could have sold it. <laughs> I know. For a seriously. Lot. <laughs> Did you uh, see the, the the meme where they had the uh, the poker table set up, the high stakes game, and they all had rolls of toilet paper as uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, <poker> so chips. <laughs> Corny. <laughs> the meme game Corny. is definitely strong. I think that is one of the highlights of 2020. Really, yeah. is the memes. Yeah. It was uh, on fire. Shit. Shelly Peacock, I don't know if you watch this. What? You're in the WordPress community. I got a new Facebook friend. And okay. Since we're on the meme things. Congratulations. She has brightened my Facebook feed <laughs> to no end because she posts the funniest memes all day long. She's going to get all kinds of like friend requests. Now I know she's going to get new, look, a lot look, of new followers. I now. will tell you, it is so funny. You know, the... uh I think the funniest one this week was the, um, you know how they found that, what is it, obelisk or s- silver thing in the desert? Monolith. Oh, yeah, the, the monolith, monoliths. Right? And then There's they're multiple. disappearing. People are knocking them down and stuff. <laughs> and they're like, is it aliens? Is it outer space? And somebody put on, on photoshopped on one of those monoliths. Um, um, hello, we've been trying to reach you for your uh, car warranty that's unexpired or something. <laughs> you know, the telemarketing. I don't know if you get those in Australia. Today, <laughs> but here in the U.S., every every other day I get a call. Hey, your auto, lo- in, you know, warranty, warranty. is about to expire. <laughs> no. Nope. So, oh, that's funny. The meme uh, John Williams in the chat just said, try the book Atomic Habits. I don't know oh. if he's replying to someone else, but I will say that was one of my favorite books this year as well. Um, Atomic Habits. It's all about kind of what Tim was talking about, making your targets really, really, really small. And so when you're trying to achieve some new habits, you make it so small. Like if you want to go for a walk, you say, I will go for a two minute walk every day. And then once you get out there, you achieve it. And you're, it's so easy to achieve it that you're like, stuff it. I'm going to do like a five minute walk or a 10 minute walk. And slowly because you oh, make nuts. it so, so, so make- small, you can't not achieve it. Like if you want to do some like squats or whatever, you say, I'm going to do two squats. You do two squats and you're like, yeah, this is totally achievable. And so by nailing those every day, you are able to actually grow to where you want to get to. So Atomic yeah, Habit's really good. It's great on audio book. As it's well. the starting that's the hard part anyway. Right? Yeah, the habit yeah. forming and is, it is the hard part because like 
yeah, you can go and do a really intense workout and be like, wow, I got such a good workout compared to someone that started really small, like Sarah described, but yeah. the chances of the person that started really small sticking with it long-term is way higher. Cause it's all about the habit forming. And when you start too intense, you're not going to form habits. You're going to be like burnt out right away. Yeah. Just burn yeah. Out and, and for me, I, like with my walking, I started with saying, I'm going to do a 10 minute walk and it can be slow. I don't have to be doing it exercise, whatever. I'm just going to get out for 10 minutes. And I'm now up to kind of 35, 40 minutes every day. And again, it doesn't matter if it's slow. It doesn't matter if it's fast. It's just about getting out there. But it started with 10 minutes and that was it. That was achievable. <clears throat> like anyone can find 10 minutes in their day. So um, that worked yeah, for I, me really well this year. That's how I started meditating. You know, I've tried to meditate for like, gosh, a couple of decades. And I always felt like I couldn't slow my mind down. And I'd go meet these yeah super guru meditators and they were like focus on your breath focus on your breath and i couldn't focus on my breath because my mind was racing the whole damn time and it was just hard and this one guy looked at me and he said go home breathe 10 minutes a day for a week i don't give a shit what you think about i don't care what thoughts come into your mind it doesn't matter let them come in just breathe I'd recommend breathing for more than 10 minutes. I prefer. Well, I just, hours. he got me started and I, and I'll tell <laughs> we you. All were like, oh, oh, I got this one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what ended up happening was after like the third day, the first couple of days I was focused and my mind was still going, but the habit that I was forming, I started to, my mind started to relax and, you know, and it was just, and I was able to actually focus and learn how to focus more on my breath and, and learn how to meditate longer and stuff. But it all started with just like, dude, just go breathe, do something, the same thing every day and, and let it change you. So yeah. Yeah. It, it was yeah my, my favorite catchphrase is uh, consistency beats intensity. You know, it's about like getting that consistency to build those habits. And that's way more important in the early stages than being super intense about it. And, trying to go on a 10 mile run or trying to meditate for, you know, 30 minutes straight with like a perfectly calm, you know, mind, yeah. just be consistent. Yeah. And if you I want to try meditation, that. highly recommend the calm app because it doesn't, I use an insight. Woo-woo. I like insight. Nice. Okay. I don't know. I tried it. I, I, God, I, I, yeah. You guys get an app. It helps. That's yeah. our point. You yeah. Know. That make it easier. Yeah. I think that uh, was probably the biggest, thing for me was meditation because it has changed my life it really has from a personal standpoint meditation has it's a game changer from a clarity perspective from an idea having new ideas and just the creativity that has come even more so um from meditation who thought dv chat could be so woo woo and all about like exercise (laughs) and mindfulness like what <laughs> next yeah, uh next awesome. week we're not gonna have a divi chat episode but dave is just gonna come play his bowls for you <laughs> hey oh, look i suck that, that's B-O-W-L-S. Look, those damn bowls are hard they're hard to learn i, I thought uh, they would be easy you see people do them like this you know and they're going yeah. around them and i'm like oh that's easy right well i got it or you got to take some I, video of him doing he, he was he was doing it yesterday it was actually pretty cool um but I, yeah I was like, I didn't think he was going to be able to get it at first because he's like, and then he's trying to get it going. I was like, what are you doing? It's harder than it looks. I'm telling you. I bet. I have literally no idea what you guys are talking about. (laughs) Before I leave. I've never heard of it. In the morning before I wake up and leave the guest room here at David's house, I'm like, David, are you decent? Yeah, doing like, you know. (laughs) I'll do it naked meditating with my bowls. Like Matthew McConaughey. I warned him. I warned him last night. Matthew McConaughey. Got my big bowls. When you hear the bongos, (laughs) shut your eyes. David, David, you play with your bowls or we we decent? (laughs) You play with your bowls. That's right. (laughs) Uh, Well, the the the, are Tim and Sarah is they are um, they're. They're musical notes. So each bowl, one's an, one I have is an F, a G, and a, I think, I can't remember what the other one is, but they're aligned with the chakras. So the heart, you know, the throat, the crown. And they he have says, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's right. Corey's oh, going to show him? us. Oh, he's going to show you're, us. You're, oh, my God. You're gosh. muted, Corey. Sarah so has we to can't go. hear you. So you'll have to I unmute do. yourself. 
He's going to show to buy a house. There's so much One to of my do. Med- my, meditation, my meditation room. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, fancy. Show him the Buddha, man. Show him the Buddha. There's my Buddha in the oh, window. There you there. go. Aw. Yeah. Yeah, little baby so. Buddha. Baby Buddha. That's, man, Corey just went on the road. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. I mean, oh, tour Sarah's got to go. She's got to go buy yeah. a house and My stuff. favorite yeah, meal is food. bread and Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one I'll of the most important things everything. we've learned is that despite <laughs> anything that's going on, the maturity level of Divi Chad does not change. Yeah. We're still <laughs> well we're still here for the ball jokes. It's gonna it's just how it is, yeah. <laughs> well, it seems like we've gotta go. Sarah's gotta go, Tim's gotta go. We're past time. Yeah, I get Thanks, everybody. Everybody. We're not going to see you guys till next year. We're going to yeah. miss you. Mwah. Steph and I might do a sneaky little setup chat <gasps> at some point. Ooh. I just thought we'll keep you posted. Yeah, we'll Ooh, keep you posted. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Yeah. We'll do a quick uh, so- holiday special. <laughs> And just a quick reminder, guys go to ratethispodcast.com slash Divi Chat. Give us a review, give us some feedback. We want to hear what you think. And give us some uh, episode suggestions for 2021. We're going to start the year out with some basics, as we've mentioned. We're going to sort of get down to the to the basics a bit, and then um, talk about some of the elements involved in growing your Divi business. So it's going to be a great one. Happy 2020, everybody! And get we'll see you in 2020. See you next year. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>